One of the most common scripture quotes from the Bible is John chapter 3, verse 16, and it's a great one. But let's look at the surrounding verses with it to give it a little more of a complete picture. In John chapter 3, Jesus is talking to one of the religious leaders here, Nicodemus. He was a very well-respected, well-educated man. And uh, Nicodemus was asking about how he can have eternal life. Jesus shares a comparison that the rabbi would be familiar with, one from the Jewish religion. When Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt, they were out in the desert and they began to complain about God and Moses. Numbers 21 verse 5. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Yet God did provide. He provided for their every need. He provided water and manna, which was the bread that they were complaining about. And that bread was from heaven. And yet they still complained. Verse 6. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. So the people repented. They admitted their sins and they asked for intercession. And Moses prayed to God for them and God provided a solution. The people had to look up to the bronze serpent, which was lifted up by Moses. Then they would live. Nicodemus would have been very familiar with that story. So Jesus tells him in John chapter 3, verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. So Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth and was killed on the cross for all of our sins, so that we could be saved. If only we look on him and believe in what he did for us. We are just like the Hebrews that were complaining against God, ungrateful for how he provides, wanting more of the pleasures of the world. And as God made a provision for them to be saved, he also made one for everyone to be saved through Jesus' death on the cross. We just need to do as they did, acknowledge that we sinned, turn away from our sins, and look up to our Savior Jesus, understanding his great sacrifice. Continuing, continuing on to verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's an awesome God we have. He loves us so much. He wants us to be with him for eternity. And he's so merciful. He made a way to pay the price for all of our sins. We just need to accept that free gift. I pray for my family and for my friends often that they come into a saving relationship with Jesus. It's hard to even be on social media and see all the mocking and the hatred for our father in heaven. But I pray for the mockers, too, because God loves all of his children, and he wants everyone to be saved. And I'm just so grateful to God, and I'm so blessed to have his comfort and love with me every day. And I just want that for everyone. May the good Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. God bless you all.